I've got a Mega Mailbag to do. I've got a few things here. Now these two items here, this box and this box, are pretty special. And I'll explain that when I get to it. So make sure you stick around and find out what these are. Also, if you like Mailbag videos, give us a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Use the comments down below as well. And if you're interested in supporting my channel for any reason, if you like what you see here, if you like any of my other videos, which you can see more of at the end of this video, make sure you go and check those out at the end. I've got playlists and stuff at the end there. If you like those, and maybe you also want to consider contributing to the channel and having a chat down below, just giving a thumbs up as a contribution, joining Patreon and uh, contributing that way, you know, a dollar a month. You know, if enough people gave me a dollar a month, I'll be doing so much better. Right, let's get into it. That's enough waffling. At the end of this video, there's a playlist showing a whole bunch of my other videos. If you're interested in watching more stuff, whether it's mailbag or repairs or 3D printing or whatever, um, go and check this playlist at the end. Might discover something new. And also, uh, thanks to everyone who supports me because it helps me to buy items from mailbag and bits of test gear to fix as well, which allows me to make more content for everyone else. What do we have here? So thank you, Carl. Ah, uh, okay, excellent. I'll be waiting for this. These are some iPhone 6 screens. So also a couple of screen protectors in here, and some little cases, 6G, 6S screens. Well, case protectors, little bumper, bumper protection things. And, so two screens, which hopefully have some of the sub populated. They do. These are better ones. These are quite good quality ones. So there'll definitely be links for these things down below. Get a little toolkit as well, as always. You could be two. So these are nice quality ones, these have got the pre-populated stuff in there, so I'm going to open this up and show you. Because sometimes you just transfer parts between screens, and to be honest it's a bit of a pain. So this has got a lot more stuff already in place, so let's show you that. Just up the top here you can see around the camera bezel there, that's already installed. We've got the rubber there, already installed, so those don't need to be transferred over. And also a little plastic around that sensor there too. That's also pre-installed. So I don't have to mess with any of that stuff, which is brilliant. So all I've really got to do is change the back plates over and stuff like that. This little film can, gets peeled off, that red film. So this is for iPhone 6. I've got one here, which I've been asked to fix. I've been waiting for these for a little while because postage delays at the moment, I don't know, about a month. So that's not too bad, I suppose. So I've got to fix this phone here. The screen is absolutely knackered. Uh, it's all up here. Yeah, it doesn't work properly, so. New screen. Excellent, so I'll do that later on. So there will be a video about this too, me fixing this iPhone. So I will be videoing that, and um, if you want to see the iPhone repair, make sure you um, check my Apple links. I've got Apple repair links, um, Apple playlists. I think, got, I think I might have an iPhone playlist as well, but I've certainly got an Apple playlist. So, um, you know, if you want to check out my iPhone repairs and stuff like that, check those out. And there'll links down below for various bits and pieces too. Thanks to my Patreon supporters who help support the channel. Anyone who contributes financially helps me to uh, buy more items from our bag. You know, little bits and pieces to show you guys. And to buy test gear to repair, which has been really good recently. I've actually done some sponsorships, you know, PCB I've done quite a bit recently. And the money I've been getting from that is having to buy quite a few bits of test gear, which has been brilliant. Um, obviously, I've been saving up as well, as well as my Patreon support. So these are some like lock picking jiggler keys things these are bigger than i thought they'd be I th yeah i was expecting to be a bit smaller than this actually yeah i don't think they're going to do the job i got these for just working on bits of test gear you know sometimes you get calibration locks on bits of test gear for example recently one on the dash 1062 multimeters where i i actually um managed to get a key cut which i then modified to fit the uh, datron locks you know, at the time I thought oh, I'd get some of these as well, but these are actually much bigger than I thought they were going to be, so they're probably not really suitable for that. But it may fit something else. You know, if you've got like a calibration lock on a bit of test gear and you need to, you know, just do it once, then, you know, a little bit pick set is quite handy. But I saw this, and it's fairly cheap, but it wasn't that expensive. But obviously it's meant for slightly larger locks, so I didn't quite get the scaling. <laughs> the scaling wasn't quite right in the pictures, but it could may maybe still be used. But, yeah... Not quite the plan. We'll see if we go though. There might be a use. I've got my um, Valhalla 2703 AC calibrator. I've got to do the calibration on that because it's actually up by a couple of percent. One of the pieces of test gear I've got coming, which will hopefully not be too far away, although you probably, by the time this video comes out, it would have probably arrived actually. 
I'm not going to spoil it, I'm not going to tell you. But yeah, I might better use that to help me to do that job. Anyway, yeah. Um, I bet customers looked at these a bit funny when they came through. <laughs> Alright, okay, these are just some little fuse holders, inline fuse holders. Alright, so you've got some blade fuses, standard automotive ones. You can get different fuses come with them, these ones, I think they came with 5 amps, I think. Yeah, 5 amp fuses. So sometimes you just want to put a fuse holder in line, you know, you know, it might be an existing wire, you just want to cut it and put a fuse in without having a big long trailing lead, or you get these other um, like barrel fuse type, you know, like 20 mil or 30 mil fuse holders. But these ones are quite convenient. Because all you've got to do is cut the wire, crimp these terminals on. Obviously you just cut the wire, crimp it in place, dead easy, insert a fuse you want. I mean there's come in different ratings, you can choose the fuse you want that comes applied with them. I chose 5 amp because that works quite well for me that size, for the particular function I wanted to have these for. And once you've got that in, you can just fold it over, crimp it together, well close it up, it will lash itself together. And you've got a little inline fuse holder. Pretty cheap, simple, easy to use certainly cheap so I've got a bunch of those I mean I'm gonna it's probably you know, this will last me for years <laughs> I don't use them that much but I do have some I need to use them for I do have some things I need to do I've got some existing cables which have barrel fuses on them but the fuse holders are really bad quality and actually breaking really easily so I want to cut those out and replace them with these check the links out down below I've got merch don't forget if you're interested in buying any merch you know, cups t-shirts uh, jumpers and you know, sweatshirts. I think I've got socks as well, all sorts of things. Vests. Super Save Water. Awesome. Now these are some absorbent pad thing. I got these with the idea of cleaning up flux and stuff with circuit boards. So I did some previously. So I showed some other ones which I tried. I've got uh, some of these which are more like a make a really good screen cleaner. These ones here. I showed this in previous mailbag. And I've also got some of these other ones here, which are more plasticky, but they seem to work quite well. Not bad at all. And I've also, of course, got my original ones, which are like this, little makeup cleaning pads, these things here. So these are uh, slightly bigger, um, but they're more, I feel more like cotton. And a bit stretchier as well, actually. So these are fibrous. So we'll see how these go. I mean, I don't know if they're any good or not, but I thought I'd get some and just um, try them out. So, you know, you never quite know what you're going to end up using for doing PCB repairs and cleaning up flux and stuff like that. I mean, as you would have seen when I'm doing repairs, I'll put some alcohol on it after I've you know, done the soldering to clean the flux up. Alcohol, cleaning pad, and a brush. And I'll brush over the top. And, you know, sometimes you get fibres on these other ones. You know, there might be some fibres on this and they snag on things, you know. These aren't too bad. They're certainly better than a lot of them. But um, I'm still trying to find something better. And I thought, well, I'll give these a go as well. I mean, pack of 500, cheap as, no harm in having a look. You know, they might be better. If they're no better, then okay. I've still got something else to use. You know, maybe they're good for something else as well. If they're no good for cleaning up flux, I mean, who knows? Maybe, you know, dab it and use the other pads to soak up the worst of it with the brush. Options, you know, sometimes you just want to find something else. No harm in having a look around. So we're getting close to doing these big boxes. Stick around and find out what's in there. I've got an idea what's in here. There's a few things it could actually be. I've been buying a few things locally, actually. I'll just do the test tab at the top. This is from local, so there might be a link for this. Could be one of about three things. I'm not quite sure which one it is. Okay, it's a phone. iPhone. Let's use a proper knife on this. Isn't it? It's very nice not cutting it today. Literally, you know, not cutting it. Get it. I'm here all week. So what I've decided to do is have a look at maybe doing some more iPhone repairs and getting some broken stuff and see if I can fix them up. But well, why not? I mean, I fix all sorts of stuff and iPhones are readily available. They've got a reasonable retail price, you know, if you can if you can fix them up and get them going again, they're not locked or anything like that, then there's a good possibility that you can fix them. You know, it could be worth doing at least. It might pay $100 for a broken phone, for example. It might put 100 bucks into it and maybe set it for 250 you know, $50 profit. Maybe. main reason I got into this actually is because my son needed a new phone. And I thought, well, I could buy a new one or I could pick up some broken ones and make him one. So that's what I'm basically doing. I've got, I've purchased a few different phones. 
the idea is to try and make one good one out of them. We'll see what happens. I mean, if I can do it, great. If not, then, oh well. I've got some spare parts anyway. This one's pretty bad. This is like an insurance written off item. And I purchased this one because I think I paid $20 for this one, if I remember rightly. And I said to him, just make sure that you send one with a decent chassis on it. Because that's what I wanted was a good chassis. I didn't care about the screen or the insides because I've got one which has got good insides, but the chassis is absolutely knackered. So I wanted one to transplant into. Looking pretty good. So who knows? Maybe I'll even recover the original one. Who knows? I do have some new screens. Not the ones that's right. Those are sixes. This is 6S. Let's go to these boxes. Let's go for a smaller one first. I think this is a bit more basic items. I think the more interesting stuff is in here. We're, we're going to have a good discussion as well about what's in there. So we'll find out anyway. This is just my suspicion. Awesome. So as you can see, it says, well, you can probably see, it says Pomona on the front. And there's a good reason for that. That's because it's from Fluke. Well, Fluke owned Pomona. It used to be. I don't know if they always have owned Pomona. Whether they acquired them at some point. I'm not sure. I'm quite sure what the story is there. But this is a Pomona ESD safe screwdriver set. This is uh, a new addition to their offerings, I suppose. It's a fairly new item, I think. So I'm going to do a little review on these in you know, more depth. Obviously, I'm just going to quickly look at it now in the mailbag. So 2.5 by 0.4 pH 0. PA00, so 3 by 0 0.5, 2 by 0 0.4, and the last one is 1.5 by 0.23. So another proper view on this and what's in this box. Then I'll tell you more about what's going on. Stick around. Actually, here's the back of it as well. It's got ESD set 6. It's available on the Pomona website. There'll be links down below for these, obviously. But I'm also going to do a proper review on this gear. Oh, let's get in this one. Now, there's a bit of a story to this. Shall I tell you the story before you see what's in here? No, uh, kind of. In a mailbag recently, I don't know, probably a month ago or so, when you see this one, maybe a bit longer actually, probably about six weeks ago from the time you see this video, I showed you some Pomona cables which I purchased on eBay, which I thought were fake. So that's just grabbing them now. That's this cable here, right? Looks the wrong colour, doesn't seem right, the quality doesn't seem quite as good. Anyway, I emailed Pomona and said, What do you think about these things? Are these fake? And I checked them out and they said, We think they're fake. I sent a bit of a chat with them and stuff, and they so they sent me some stuff, which is what the story is about all that. Which is why I've got two boxes from Fluke here, because say Pomona's owned by Fluke, it's a Fluke brand. Because they were grateful for me bringing this to your attention about the dodgy cables. They said, we'll tell you what, we're going to send you some replacement cables. So here's a cable. I did buy two of those other ones, but this is what they sent me to replace it with. So this is the proper one. Actually, right, I've opened it upside down, haven't I? Anyway, the 2BA18, which is what the other one's marked as. So hopefully the whole thing about them being fake, it was correct. So now I've actually got one of the original cables. Let's do a bit more of a close comparison here. Because I'd hate to actually be you know, saying this is a fake cable and actually it isn't. It's maybe this is an old one. So let's have a really close look. Because the thing I was suspicious before is that the plugs on these ones were totally different to the other cables we've got, which are, I know are correct ones. Okay, so this is the cable which is believed to be fake. All right. And this is their definite real cable. So let's do some comparisons here. They do definitely look very similar. very similar. Radiusing around this here is different. That's very squared off, this is radiused. The gating is different. So this bit on the side here is called the gate. So where the sprue goes in, it's slightly different, it's not quite the same. That's square, that's more rectangular. If you look on the back, just stick, stick them together, just plug them in. There you go. Do that. So the labelling is also different. Okay, this has got some extra labelling on it compared to this one. So although it's extremely similar, it is not the same. I work in plastics for a living. If you don't know that, then that's a surprise for you, maybe. But I actually work in plastics for a living, so I'm used to looking at plastic moulds and checking 
for issues and stuff like that. So I'm just doing it more closely, especially I'm looking through the camera. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's marks on here, which aren't on this one. Could be a different cavity on a mould, it's possible. But I mean, the similarities you know, are very similar but different. They're not similar enough for me to say it's the same mould. It's not the same mould, it's different. It's a copy. So, yeah, I'm confident this is not actually a real cable. Unless it's a really old mould and they've replaced it with a new mould. I don't know, but then I thought they would know themselves when they went and checked. They checked with the factory to check for these, whether these are real or not. And they didn't think they were real. Anyway, so they sent me a real cable. So, thank you very much, Fluke, for sending me that. That was brilliant. The cable itself is different, as you can see as well. One's slightly darker than the other. This one's got that written on it, which for start is the wrong colour ink. The cable was different. This is... You can see it's like a twisted pair in there or something in there, anyway. So maybe it is a good cable, but it's different cable to this one as well. It's not the same cable. Different colours. There's just um, so many subtle differences, which does make you think that it probably isn't real. And so the other thing you sent me is this. It's called a twist guard test leads. It's the 7519A. Let's try and get this in focus. All right, so they've got like a twisting cap on the end. Let's get them out. So I'm going to do a proper review on these, you know, because these have obviously been sent to me no cost, so I need to give them their money's worth too. <laughs> you can me free stuff and I need to kind of promote them, which I think is a fair, fair deal. So these have a twisting section on here, so you can expose the amount of probe you want. So if you only want a very tip showing, you can. If you want to have the whole thing open, you can. Um, nice silicon leads. I'm not sure what length these are. Details there. Freeze it and have a look if you like. All the usual warnings and stuff. Don't eat them, that sort of thing. So, Cat 3 or Cat 4 with it forward apparently, and Cat 2 with it back. That's the ratings. So yeah, they sent me two of those, which is very generous of them, so I've got a really nice set of leads now. That's excellent. 10 amp rated as well. Kind of spoiled now. So that's a really nice set of test leads. Excellent. So make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, thumbs up if you like the video. If you want to see more about these, actually doing some testing and playing around with them a bit more, a bit more detail. Nice strain relief. Or anything else I've been looking at here, like the iPhone repairs, have a close look at these as well, these screwdrivers, make sure that you subscribe. Check out the playlist at the end, which will be you know over there and over there and well, there, there, over here. Those will show you some more videos, other things you may want to watch. As I've said, it could be repairs, it could be more mailbag videos, it could be something odd, it could be like a review video, or it could be anything. Oh, lots of videos, 760 odd videos, so there's something for you to watch. Just go and have a look. Catch you later, I'll see you next one. And I'll do a review on these things soon. So if you've got a wire which you want to put a fuse into, rather than having to get a fuse holder and insert it in line in an awkward way or maybe getting a special one, really, I'm really out of shot. Yeah, so, um, oh crap, it's still big in.